Welcome. Today we're going to do a little bit of a study or a looking at wood stoves, pellet stoves, safety. And we're going to look at what you need to do to plan to keep your wood stove and pellet stove clean. And at the same time, we're going to begin with a conversation about how you can plan for winter and keeping yourself warm. So today's show is really sponsored by the Masons of the Wilton Lodge 50, 156 in Wilton, Maine, and by the Grand Lodge of Maine. And I've been very fortunate to have help from uh, uh, the Northern Lights, uh, and they're using their facility, and Josh will be on in a bit. Josh Bell will be on, who's the owner, to talk about cleaning wood stoves. Uh, we'll also have the Wilton Fire Department be part of this conversation as they talk about some of the things about fires that have occurred in Wilton, as well as some of the safety things that they think you should follow. But my first guest is Tim Hardy from Franklin County Emergency Response. Did I get it right? Emergency Management. Management. Oh, it's just it. Tim, welcome to the show. Good You're morning, the director. Tom. Thank you. And I really appreciate you coming on and being part of this show because we want to get the word out as to what people should be planning for this winter. What should they be thinking about? And you had some ideas that you wanted to share. So let's start with that, and I'll just ask questions around that. Okay. Well, uh, as, as we all are very much aware that uh, uh, everything uh, has been affected by the inflation, uh, no matter whether it's uh, fuel oil prices, food, uh, uh, electrical services and that type of thing and and, and I realize that uh, uh, probably uh, as we get into the colder season that uh, that may be uh, a challenge to us all and so uh, I think now would be a good time uh, we're going in, into September and winter will be here before we know it uh, to kind of plan ahead a little and, and uh, Look, look around your residence and see, see what you, you have uh, for uh, heating supplies. Uh, do you burn wood? Uh, is, is your wood dry? Uh, is, do you have a contract with your heating oil company? Uh, do you own automatic delivery with, with them or your propane company? Uh, as far as uh, any electrical appliances that you use for heating, are those clean? Are the, are the cords on them? Uh, not frayed, in, in, in good condition. And I think your point is well taken. We know that fuel oil at this point is some tell it's going for five dollars a gallon. Uh, we know that uh, the cost of wood is going up a little bit and that people are trying to find the alternatives and, and you bring up some really good points about having your your different types of appliances. I hadn't even thought about that to make sure that because you may turn on a heater that you normally don't turn on because you can Maybe that uh, the electric cost won't be as bad as five gallons, five dollars a gallon in your fuel uh, fuel bill. Well, that's correct, and also uh, something that, uh, that I'm just as guilty as, as a lot of people are. Uh, I think it's time that we reach out and uh, go out and see who our neighbors are, introduce ourselves, make make those uh, connections and conversations, and because during the, the cold and the winter months, uh, uh, it's good for. Uh, neighbors to check on each other and just just say hi and, and make sure that everything is going okay and, and also uh, it's a good time maybe to stock up uh, as you do uh, your grocery shopping and, and we all know the prices of food has gone high but you know maybe now's the time to grab a, an extra canned good or two a, as you're shopping every time and, and have it stored away in a cupboard so that later on this winter that uh, if the need arises, that you do have some extra supplies on hand. Now, Tim, when we talked earlier, you talked about go bags. Yep. Uh, what, what, what is a go bag, and, and, and why would you have one, and then what would you, might you have in a go bag? Well, what, what we uh, classify as a go bag would be uh, any type of uh, bag that, uh, that you have uh, fairly handy in case you have to leave your home in a hurry for whatever reason. Uh, Probably in this area, it probably would be around a weather event. And in that bag, uh, prioritize some of the items uh, that you have that you would need to take with you uh, in a hurry. Your medication list, your medications. Uh, the other thing is contact information, uh, anywhere from, from your physician to your plumber to your heating person. Uh, your emergency contact information, who to reach in case of emergency, and make sure those lists are updated because as we all know, contact information changes very frequently and, 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 and in the Emergency Management Agency we try to 
keep a resource list together. And that one of the big challenges of that resource list is keeping those contacts updated. It's almost a full-time job because of... And I would add to that list your passwords. Yes. Because you, if you're going to go someplace that you might have access to a computer and you don't have access to your own computer where it had all your passwords on it, you may want to have that sheet in that go bag so that you go there and say, well, what did I have for... Uh, whatever emergency response evaluation, you can go look at it. That, that, that's, that's, that's very phone numbers. That I, is, we, we forget about that. That's a great time. idea because everybody, as we all know, now either has a tablet or the phone with them all the time. That's correct. And then they try to remember what it is and they go look it up to have yeah. that. So what else would be in that go bag? I know medication is a good one because I know a yep. lot of people that are elderly particularly have some number of medications they have to take. Uh, so they have the least list in the prescription in case they have to fill it when they get out. It's a great idea. Yeah. You know, uh, I would put uh, uh, some type of uh, warming blanket in there, uh, depending on if you had to go to a shelter or what we classify as a warming center, uh, you know, you would have that with you so that if you needed to wrap up in it and stay comfortable, that, that might be another item that you include in it. So. And if you have a pet, because this is the thing that I remember we were putting our go bag together we had to make sure that we had a couple of days worth of food for, for Henry. That's right. There. So if you've got a pet, make sure that you've accommodated yeah. them yeah. in there. Toothbrush, uh, comb, uh, maybe a washcloth, maybe yeah. a towel, maybe your bag starts to get a little bit big, but those are the things that if you go to an emergency response area, you might not have access yeah. to right yeah. away. And, and the other thing, you uh, uh, be good to reach out to, uh, uh, well, actually you could reach out to your local fire departments in your community and and probably that'll be talked about a, uh, a little later, but uh, uh, find out where your shelters or your warming centers are, and you brought up a good point. Will they accept pets? Because we learned back way back in the ice storm in 1998, some people would not leave their homes because they had no place to go with, had their, no pets. Place to go with their pets. Wow. So I so. remember that, that storm. Well, that was when most people had gotten rid of their wood stoves. Yes. Because the price of oil had dropped so much. And we were one of the few houses that had wood stoves. So every day I'd go to work because everybody was in control at home because the wood stoves were going. And I came home and the house was packed because nobody else had heat in their house. So, but that's a good point. And, and, and we learned a lot from that and we should continue to learn from that. And, and I, Tim, I think in this area, we usually do have a warming center that's usually set up at some of the churches. Yes. And they haven't been officially announced yet, but they will be yes. uh, at some point. But they usually have something at least one day a week or two days a week where you can get together both as a warming center and as a social event. They'll yeah. have different activities for a couple hours a day. Yeah, and also uh, uh, for those folks, uh, uh, Western Maine Community Action, uh, provides applications for heating assistance too, and now now may be the time of year to be thinking about that too. So. And we can we we'll we'll get the phone numbers and post them with this this thing yeah. about some of the different places people can go yeah. for resources. And two one one is another great resource. Uh, they can point people in the right direction if they have questions on any type of preparedness or basically, uh, you know, any any subject that they have a question on so. And a number that they can reach you at, yep. what, what would that number be? Uh, be 778-5892. 778-5892. Now that's for Franklin County. If you're watching this in another county, you'll want to get to their emergency, your emergency response, emergency management group and ask them for their number and have it posted because you may want to ask them a question. You may want to get your town fire department. We'll hear Wilton's in a minute, but we want to get your town fire department. Do you know Farmington's fire department? You yep. have some relationship to the chief that's there. 778-3235. This is another, but again, for those that are not in Franklin County that are watching this, you that is going to be, you want to have that on your list so that you know who to call if you have a question related to this. It's non-emergency related. What else, Tim, can we add to being prepared for the winter? Well, make sure, and. Uh, that you're uh, uh, one of the big items that, that's coming uh, to mind and, and uh, I'm sure uh, Tom Doak will talk about it from Wilton Fire but uh, carbon monoxide detectors. Oh, good point. Smoke detectors, carbon monoxide detectors, make sure those are all in working order. Another uh, uh, detector that has come to the forefront uh, is, is a, a gas detector for propane and LP gas so, so that's something else that you may want to think of. Yeah, and the propane detectors, you make a good point because I was looking to get one for my house and so I'm, I burn propane now, but most of them seem like they don't operate just on battery. They are plug-ins. Is that correct or do they make some battery operate? Well, I believe, I'm not uh, positive, but I believe that those that plug-in also have a ba battery, battery backup, backup in the 
smoke, just like a smoke detector will. And, and as everybody should do, and I probably should do better than I do, is that we change time. It's always the good time to go check your batteries. That's right. And your smoke detectors. Because yep. yep. they can make a huge difference, yep. particularly if you're burning some kind of a fuel besides oil, yep. uh, that you want to be able to be woke up in the middle of the night if you have to. Uh, what else have you got, Tim, that we should share with everybody? This is great. Well, well one, of, one of the things for this area, uh, and, and you, you are very familiar with this, uh, uh, I think a good resource uh, to listen to is, is WKTJ. Uh, Rick Davis, we, we both know him very well, has been a great partner with the Franklin County Emergency Management Agency over the years. And uh, anything that we want to get out there for information, he's more than willing, doesn't care what time of day or night. And also Clyde Ross, who is uh, our public information officer and deputy fire chief, does public service announcements around emergency preparedness from all a wide variety of topics. So th that is a, a great resource as far as I'm concerned for this area, and it, and it reaches quite a wide right, area. Right around it. And it's certainly, again, if you're from another area and you're watching this show, that information can be obtained where you might be able to listen from your emergency management group that's in that county yes. or, the, or, or that part of the state or wherever you might be located. They can provide that information, how you can res get to that resource officer and find out what's going on. Yes. Um, this is great, Tim. I mean, we, this is going to be a challenge this winter. There's no question about that. It is, it is, yeah. yeah. So and we're hoping that, uh, that people will plan ahead a little. And, and as I said, we, we all need to get out there while the weather's nice and meet our neighbors and get, get a conversation, dialogue amongst each other so we can kind of check on each other and help each other out during this winter. So. Great. Tim, I want to thank you for thank being you part Tom. of the show. Appreciate and, it. And we'll now move on to bring in uh, Tom Doak. We'll okay. talk about fires. Appreciate Good. it very thank much. Thank you. Thank you. So as we continue uh, preparing ourselves for the winter and heating and uh, safety and so forth, I've had the pleasure of my good friend, Deputy Chief Tom Doak of Wilton. Thomas, welcome to the show. Thank you. And for sharing your information and taking the time for us. You've been in the firefighting business for quite a while. We're just sharing about that. Yeah, 65 years. 65 years. Wow. Yep. One of the things in Wilton we have seen is, is, and you've been part of, the various chimney fires, pellet stove fires. Yep. And so how many have we had in Wilton recently? We've had a total of nine in 2022 so far, um, which doesn't sound like a whole lot, but it is for small departments, small towns. Uh, we had two pellet stoves, two wood stoves, one fireplace, with an insert, uh, one structure fire, and there was a questionable reason for that to have started. And we've had uh, three chimney fires. Now, two of them were in the same were in the same building. So that's that's what we've done. And most of these are obviously designed with wood burning appliances. Uh, one of the problems we have that we haven't talked about and nobody really thinks about is that some people have wood heat as an add-on to oil heat and they operate in the same chimney and that's a that's a thing that we have looked at and it's in the NFPA standards and it's in the codes that you can have two appliances on the same chimney the issue with that is when that chimney plugs, if you're running your oil burner, there's a danger to the inhabitants of that building 
if it's tight at all because you have the fumes and the gases from the combustion in the oil burner coming back into the house because they can't get out. And people can get sick and at some point if they're not paying attention or if they're very elderly and they can't move, they could die. When you get called to a chimney fire, what does the fire department do? Do they put it out? Do they uh, let it burn? What do you do when you come to... to well, we don't let it burn um, because the issue with that, particularly if it's wood burning, the issue with that is um, chimneys sometimes are not installed and they get close to framing in the house and that over time can start a fire by itself if that chimney is, is blocked. So um, what we do is, nor one of our normal things is we take a, some Ansel powder that we take from old fire extinguishers. Oh, okay, yes. Uh. We, we put it in plastic baggies. We get the ladder or the aerial devices up if we can. If we can't, we use ground ladders, but we get up to the top of the chimney and if the, fire, if the fire chimney is still burning actively, we'll drop that down the chimney. It melts, spreads out, and usually one or two will take care of the fire so it's not actively burning. And you know what, your story about that is, is true. When I was living in Orrington and we were buying our first house, we went inside the house and looked it all over and it was immediately we fell in love with it. And we got downstairs and the lady said, I'm sure you saw by the chimney there was a piece of uh, sheetrock that was unpainted. And we're kind of looking at each other. Yeah, well, yeah, we saw that. Well, one New Year's Eve, they had a big fire in the fireplace. And they mm -hmm. went out cross-country skiing and came back in and could smell smoke. So they called the fire department. And that's before they had the infrared uh, cameras. Yep. They kind of put their hands on it to see if it was hot. Yes. Eventually, they felt like they were uncomfortable. So they pulled the siding off the outside and the flames just shot out of there. So they, had, they were very lucky that they didn't burn the house down. Yes, that's, that's happened in numerous places over time, uh, the different ones, places I've been, including my own house. Uh, I had a wood stove in there and burned it for several years before I quit. And when I got done, I tore the wall out, the framing around that, around, and they had built from an outside chimney, they had built a chimney of, of brick and mortar through the wall. So I didn't think anything about it when I started. When I tore that chimney down and tore that blocking out of there, the wall framing inside there was charred. It wow. was charcoal. Wow. And I don't know how that was lucky we got yeah. past that. But that's something you can't see and you really don't catch on to. So that's one of the reasons that stove installation is so important have somebody professional or somebody look at it that knows what they're doing uh, because you can't put, you have spaces that you have to have so much airflow around this thing. Um, and that just brings me to some of the codes that I had to and go by when I was working. And all of those have clearances. If you put a, ch I put up a number of chimneys, that if you put a chimney up, you have to have a clearance from the from combustible materials, you have to have so much airspace between that and the chimney itself. You can go online and you can look that up. It, it gives you all of those clearances that you have. The best bet is to get somebody who knows what they're doing to do it, though. Tom, when you have a call, well, let me ask this. Does Wilton, if I have, was putting a wood stove in or I bought a house and I was concerned would, and I asked the fire department, would they come just to kind of look at it and give me some suggestions? We do. You do do that? And yes. We don't do it as an official Capacity. act because that's liability right. to the town and we are not, not something that we do officially, but we will come and look at an installation and make recommendations and then tell them to look up the codes and be sure that they're they're following those. And while we're thinking of it, the phone number for the Wilton Fire Department, general phone number? Uh, 207 645 three, uh, 
2211. 2211. And we'll run that. But again, for those that are listening from other communities and other counties, uh, you want to possibly contact your local fire department. I know some of them around here actually offer chimney cleaning services because they don't want to come into your house in the middle of the night to put out a fire. They would prefer that they took care of yeah. it before then. Yeah. And I'm sure they'll offer the similar services that Tom has described where they'll come and check out your stove. They can't tell you whether it's right or wrong, but they can give you some suggestions to make sure that you're safe. Yeah. Uh, so I would ask you to follow up with them too. Do you use the infrared uh, piece of equipment? We do. You do. So, and that's another piece of equipment that we didn't have years ago. That, no. That when you have a chimney fire no. or think that there's something maybe in the walls, you can actually run this piece of equipment up yes. and down to see whether or not you have a hot spot behind yep. it. Yes, we can. We can tell you the temperature or what's of the wall itself and what's behind it. It's, they're great pieces of equipment. It's, they're more recent, <laughs> but they are wonderful things. We can locate, those things can locate people if we're searching for them in the woods or whatever. They can, they sense, they can find the warmth. Really? Of, I, yep. Uh, we've we used those in, ser in searches on occasion recently. Um, we can go in and check houses. We can find people that are maybe hidden somewhere afterwards if necessary. That's not a lot, but the biggest use for it is just exactly what you say. I remember I had a stove fire and I called up. Something happened on my stove that shorted out and I got it out, but the crew came up and they had that piece of equipment just to check in my walls to make sure something hadn't moved in there that we hadn't anticipated. Yes. So it's a good point. Yeah. What else do we have that the fire department, did you learn? I mean, these fires, when they come, can be pretty nasty, I would take it. We have difficulties with throughout, and thank God for mutual aid, because volunteer or fire departments don't exist anymore. We're mostly paid call, um, as well, other than professional or full-time. Um, so we don't know what we got coming, or how many, or, or what we do. So we work well with Jay in Farmington and surrounding communities and we go to a lot of surrounding communities as well. But the, the fire calls have increased over time. We've, we've had more and more problems with the chimney fires and the, the other calls, but we do a lot of different things now. So thankfully, the safety issue that we've talked about here and there with wood burning has been a little bit more involved with people seeing what they need to have to do and getting assistance but we still have the uh, the free <laughs> the folks that try to do it themselves the and, yeah. and get it done yeah. on and don't care much or don't understand what they're supposed to do and, and Tom, let me just add, your own professional experience, I know you as a firefighter and emergency response person, but you had 25 years in the propane stove industry, so you kind of know what's safe and what's not safe. It's, yeah, it's something is, that has been changed over the years too, because when, of course the older propane equipment had pilots, <laughs> the, which was propane burning in a very small flame, and that was what would ignite the main burners. Um, that's all gone for the most part now. It's electronic um, and I don't, uh, haven't worked in it in that industry for a lot of years so somebody else can tell you more about that than I can but it was always an issue with propane because uh, you have leaks, they have leaks and so forth. We had I, a lot of odor calls. I think what I think is your important the point that you make is that these kind of calls have increased. Yes. And that knowing, as, as Tim shared with us, going into the winter, knowing it's going to be cold. I mean, according to the former Farmer's Almanac, we're going to have a nasty winter. Mm -hmm. uh, is, is that more people are going to go back to wood stoves. They got away from them yep. because oil and other alternatives were cheaper. Well, now they're going to go back to them. And yep. they're going to probably try to, some of them, install on the cheap. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to, through this show, say, think about what you're doing. Spend that extra money to get it done right so that mm -hmm you're not one of the extra calls that we have coming in no. to Wilton. And the other, there's another piece to that is that we're talking about wood and propane and that sort of thing. But a lot of people will take some electric heater and plug it into a wall outlet and the next thing you know, 
they have a problem because that wall outlet isn't either isn't designed to take that load or it's defective in some way because it's old wiring. We have a lot of old houses now that still have run, running knob and tube wiring in them that is functional. And that in itself is dangerous because that wire is undersized for a lot of the loads that we're putting on it with all of our appliances today. So that's another issue entirely from what we're talking about, but it, Something fits, in, it fits in the same area. So Tom, I want to thank you for coming on. And I, you picked the right uniform out. We, oh, were, gee, we, were thanks. we were joking about what he should wear today. You've been great, and thank you yep. for your service to the community and to Wilton yep. and to the state of Maine. Thank you, my thank friend. Thank you very much, Tom. Well, Josh, Bell, thank you for coming on the show and thank you for letting us use Northern Lights as a place to demonstrate and talk to people about stove safety and, and the importance of being prepared for the winter time. Much appreciated. Northern yeah. Lights is located here in Farmington and, and you do sell so stoves and the other accessories that we may be looking at today. But much appreciated yeah. for your time and, and for your location. So won't spend a lot of time with the propane stove because yep. but just explain a little bit how it works and then why you don't spend time with it. Well you don't have to spend too much time with the propane it's a pretty simple system for the most part. Um, there's a couple of variations. There's electronic ignition and there's standing pilot which of days of old most everything was standing pilot back then. Um, the big thing is to getting it serviced once a year. Um, you know you're gonna have your gas company come you can ask them to come and do a leak test if you want every year. Um, it's not a bad thing to do, they'll test the whole system, but really the critical thing is having it installed correctly. Um, with the propane stoves, most of them have closer clearances to combustibles. Um, even with the venting, it's pretty l minimal, but they all have some. So, you know, that's a big thing like when you're doing an installation on any of them, whether it's wood, pellet, or uh, propane is following the manual. So you, you, know. and you got an example yep. of a so manual. So just like a manual here, this is by a Hearthstone. Um, so it just goes in, basically you're, you know, you go in, you have your clearances. One chart right here, it shows how close to be to a wood wall or sheetrock, um, other things like that. There's also, you know, how close the vent can be and minimum clearances. So with this, it's a wood stove, but that's really critical for the homeowner, especially if they, a lot of people want to install their own pellet stove or wood stove, hook it up to the chimney. They think, well, the chimney's always been there, but they just throw it in. So big thing is to follow the manual because this is what the UL listing of the appliance is. And this will actually, in the end, need to be followed critically. You know, you can go to the NFPA 211 and that gives you the generalization of most stoves and everything, but then it'll always revert back to the, the manual, manufacturer's. So has it changed with the setbacks on stoves? It used to be really, really big. Is it pre is it before they all had to go? I think it, I can't remember the year off the top of my head. They all had to become UL listed, um, and so all the manufacturers of the appliances had to have them all UL listed. And so then that found out how close that particular model could be to say a wood wall behind it or sheetrock and stuff like that. So that really you know, made it so that all the appliances, then they all had a manual. And most of the stoves now, too, also with chimneys, a lot of them require their own flue system. There are a few out there that don't, they can be shared with, say, oils or such, but, um, the, you know. And so propane would have its own flue system. Yeah, primarily, yes. There are some, there are some places where certain propane appliances can be hooked in with oil, so you just have to follow the recommendations but most of the most cases in a propane stove, yes. you want to have it put in by a professional that's licensed yes. to work with yes. propane. With, because, yes. And I know after you put in my propane stove at my house, I have two of them. I have one that does have the old pilot in it, which right. is a pain the light. And then I have the electronic one, which I love. Right. Um, but it's one of the things after I put it in, Fabian Oil, who provides my propane, came mm -hmm. over and did an inspection just to make sure yeah. everything was uptight because uh, Phil Moray, my plumber, came mm -hmm. in and to plumbed up the yep. propane so that it could operate. So and yes. it's, it's I'm, I'm, as I told you, I'm anxious to get ready to use it when it's not 80 degrees. Well, exactly. So. But there's, so there's really nothing from a maintenance standpoint that the homeowner really can do. They really need right. to bring the person who put it, the stove in to do yes. that work. Yeah. So you know, there's a reason for that with the propane. Yeah. You know, it's you should have a license. They're supposed to be licensed in the state of Maine to work 
and service here of propane appliance. So Good. it's really critical that you have that done. Which so. is this? Is this? This is a yodel. Is this yeah. A, so this is a yodel. It's manufactured in uh, Gorham, Maine, or Westbrook, Maine. It's right in that, right on the line, right there. So it's actually um, a Maine stove. It is. It's technically a Norwegian company, but it's, they actually assemble it and manufacture all the steel parts in Gorham. So. So, all yeah, right. So, so might we move cool. on to a pellet stove? All right. So Josh, this is a pellet stove, so mm -hmm. why don't you go through what we would do to clean it out or to okay. check it. So this is a Harman P43. So really, the consumer once a month is gonna shut their stove down, really. It doesn't matter the brand, for the most part, you're about a month of cleaning, which is, and then it can also average basically about a ton. So every ton, you know, you also can go that route. So it just, you wanna shut it off, let the stove become cold, so give it a couple hours. So work a schedule into that is what we always tell everybody whether you shut off in the morning clean it when you get home from work or vice versa just shut off at night and clean it in the morning however it works for you so really you're going to be this stove is actually dirty so this is a good example we never cleaned it after we were done using it oh. but you can see how dirty it is one little tool over the years we found works well is a headlamp because then you can actually hands free so you're just going to basically get in there you can see your burn pot here it's the way Harmon's is set up you can see the ash in here as well um, what we found works really well is the paintbrush. You can get a new one, old one, from everybody seems like they have an old paintbrush kicking around. But you're just gonna really sweep everything right down. Oh. We just sweep your heat exchangers up here, so you're gonna, so you can see all the stuff just falling down in. And so you're really gonna get after it and clean it. I won't stir it up too much because it's pretty dusty and I don't have the vacuum on. But, um, so another thing is you're gonna get in there and scrape your burn pot as well. So this is right here, you really want to do, this is basic maintenance that you're going to do every month. So you sweep everything down, sweep it all into your ash pan with Harman, it has a little door right here, and you're going to pull out, and then you just empty this out. You know, and that, this stove will vary based off the pellets you're burning as well. So a cheaper, qual cheaper pellet that is lower in quality is going to fill up faster than a higher quality pellet. So that's the consumer can actually see the results of the products that they're burning. And it's yeah. interesting. So I have to share the idea that the, I, for years I had my pellet stove mm -hmm. and uh, I just realized just before I changed it that I could really clean out the outside very easily by just uh, opening the box up and pulling yep. the bin out. Yep. And then you point out the ash when we replaced my stove, just to show you people how stupid I was, Right. Is in essence, not only was that ash on the sides, because I did keep that vacuumed out, but mm -hmm. it actually plugged up my chimney. Yeah. And I did not know it until we started to take it out. So I right. created quite a significant fire hazard in right. the facility. Right. right. So, and another thing too, at the time, consumer can then clean the glass off. Most wood stoves, even propane stoves and pellet stoves, the glass has a coating on them. So you really recommended to use a glass cleaner design for that because it'll take the coating off as well. So oh, then okay. it'll become pitted and harder to clean. So you so. just regular, you don't use Windex on no, it basically? No, because there's, there's chemicals in Windex that'll actually cause ah. the glass then to deteriorate and get pitted, so. Interesting. Yep. And also the quality of the pellets, you yes. mentioned it, but let me just, so, I'll take a handful of these yep. out. So. <laughs> so this is a pellet that got wet, and so you'd want to make sure you didn't dump this into the hopper. So this is a good thing. We see this often when the consumer goes, they just dump the whole bag in, they get wet and then they fill up and then it won't feed as well. So it's not a real necessary fire hazard. It's just the fact that it's not going to run and then you're going to have a headache. So. And then you've got the little uh, trash can over yep. there. So when you're emptying out your ashes, it is strongly recommended to put them in a metal bucket with a cover. And then whether you store them, you know, it should be stored outside. Um, not in the garage or on the back. I'd probably wouldn't even leave it on the deck because the bottom gets hot as well. So it's definitely something you want to store them off the building. Don't leave them inside. So, and definitely cover them up. Because it's surprising, like even with a wood stove, you think the ash is cold. How many times I've even yeah. done it at my house, you pull it out and then yeah. all of a sudden you, you know, you dump them outside away from the house and say it's in the snow or something, people will do that as well. And then all of a sudden it's in there steaming and you're like, oh, it's surprising how yeah, hot. Because it gets Visibly, buried, buried right. in the ash, don't yep. have the oxygen. And then Josh, do we have a special vacuum that you could yep. use? So one strongly recommended is using a ash vac. So it's a metal canister with a filter system inside. Um, it just, the, 
regular shop vacs, if you happen to suck up a hot coal and you don't realize it, that vacuum actually you can go store it in the garage and then it potentially could ignite and then you could have a house fire. So even with a metal canister vac, still recommend emptying it out after you've done and vacuumed your stove out. A um, couple other tools that are handy on cleaning. Um, the pellet vent is critical once a year at least. Oh. Um, if you burn a lot of pellets, so say you're up over you know five tons, six ton, and you burn a lot, you probably you know you're going to do it twice a year. Your pellet vent. Um, this is, is just showing the pellet vent. Is that the pellet vent? So it's going to be always on the back side of the stove. Okay. Most stoves it comes off the back. Okay. Whether it's in the center or off to the side, but it can run on three inch or four inch pellet vent. So this is a three inch pellet brush. Um, you're going to clean the whole chimney system. This is just one rod. They come in different lengths. Um, there's several variations of this, but you know the consumer is definitely capable of doing this. It's whether they choose to or not. We do offer that service to come and do an annual cleaning on the stove, and we go through the entire stove, and then we go through the venting. So this here is vented out the wall, um, which a lot of pellet stoves are vented that way. Yours was obviously vented into a chimney system, and so. One thing about that is, like at your thimble where the pipe attaches, yeah. people forget to take that off. Uh, yeah, I think so. This is a chimney brush. So it's a little bit longer, it's a little bit heavier duty and diameter, so it's a little bit, but it also has a lot of flexibility to it as well. Um, this is a just a poly round brush, which works well for your class A metal chimneys. Um, it just, with the stainless on that, is abrasive enough to clean it off, but it also doesn't scratch it up. So this works really well. Um, yet again, there are other applications out there, different types of rods. You can have them hooked to a drill and whip it clean. Yep. So, but this just gives, you know, most consumers are kind of have this. They're going to clean their chimney. This is what they have. Anything else right about up. the pellet stove? Are we ready to move to the wood stove? Um, no, not really. Just the consumers get, you know, has to be involved and realize that they have to maintain it. And they again, can't. they can do it themselves. This yes. one's easier to do it themselves, but they also have professionals like yourself yes. that they can call. Correct. On. We got a fireplace and a wood stove. Mm -hmm. One is an insert, but basically it's going to yes. do the same kind yep. of inspection. So let's yep. talk a little bit about a fireplace and how you might check it out to make sure it's clean. So this is, you know, fireplace door. I mean, there's variations in that. Um, this one's nice because it folds back out of the way for the consumer. Um, one thing too that on fireplaces, a lot of people forget they don't have a screen, so it's good to have some type of safety barrier. So Just if you're case, operating, sparks, sparks, yeah. sparks don't shoot out and land out on the rug. That yeah, you know, we all know. We've seen it happen. Yeah, yeah. Wood, so. Once or twice. And you burn wood. So I mean, obviously, it's giving an idea. This is the gas log, but you know, you'd have your grate here. You know, you could sweep everything down. One thing, your damper mechanism is always up in. So just before you start that first fire, make, make sure, sure it's, it's open. open. <laughs> that happens often. Uh, People don't. Does. They never open the damper, and then they smoke out the room and. It gets exciting quickly. <laughs> and I assume that, that we're talking about cleaning the chimney, but that yep. would be part of both cases. Here yes. it might be not as much junk Correct. gathering it yep. because it's more open fire. Yes. It's not really yep. a super heating source, no. but it's more open fire. Yeah, it's really a fireplace is about a negative inefficiency, yeah. but they're really nice to look at. So if thing, you're looking for a heat source, an open fireplace is really not bad. It's no. better than nothing as you're standing beside it, but by the time you can close the damper, which is up inside, yeah, you've yeah, lost more heat than you generated. Because it's so. all going to go right up the chimney. Right. All right, so now we go down to a wood stove, yep. an example. that This happens to be an insert, yes. but it's still the concepts are still going to be basically the same. Yes, for the most part. So like with your insert, most of them have a blower mechanism, which is down and underneath. Um, that should be pulled out once a year and vacuumed off. As it slides out, you do have a blower in here, and then it should clean it out once a year. Um, basically, Basic maintenance on a wood insert is ash is going to build up in here. You have a baffle system in as well. That's for your reburn. Um, with wood inserts that are different than a fireplace, they operate on a stainless liner. So you'd run a, most of them run all the way up to the top. Now code wise in the state of Maine, they only have to run up into the first flue tile. Now we don't install them that way. And the reason is for maintenance, it's you basically have to dis 
you know, reinstall it every time after you service it. You have to pull it back out, reinstall it, because to clean it thoroughly, you would have to get that and pull that little section of line around and then clean the damp area. So if you're having a wood insert installed, you really want to run the liner all the way to the top. And then when the chimney sweep, or we also do the service as well, run the brush down, it comes down into the firebox, and then you can clean it all out. It's a contained system. So wood inserts are great. They take a an efficient fireplace and make it extremely efficient, so. Okay, and now what about a wood stove itself? Should we switch and look at a wood stove? Sure, a uh, right. wood stove is a little bit different. We can go with catalytic. This is a non-catalytic regency. Um, so what that just means, it doesn't have a catalyst in it for to get its emissions that way. So they're all EPA compliant. Um, it just, they were able to achieve it without a catalyst. So they're basically the same as an insert, the cleaning wise and everything else. Yeah, for the most part, yep. So there are some inserts out there that have a catalyst in it. So with that catalyst, it's, you really want to maintain that and every year, clean, clean it. Because if not, what happens, it gets packed with really fine ash in it fills up and then it doesn't burn thoroughly and then it burns too hot the catalyst does and then it deteriorates and so then you're going to be buying a $300 catalyst on the regular and most people don't want to do that no that's a good idea they want to they're investing thousands of dollars and so you want that appliance to last for 25 years yeah. so Josh anything else that you want to add to maintenance of safety or around the wood stove um, you know, stove, gas stove. one big thing on safety, the consumer always forgets over time they get complacent with their stoves. Um, and so, whether it's their second home, it's their, you know, they're coming in from skiing, they always set their stuff beside. Oh. And so, over the years, we've seen that as an issue that, you know, their ski boots melt to the hearth because they had them too close. And that's really hard to get off, let me it's tell you. So, there's always thing the consumer to keep in mind that this is a heating appliance. Be careful if you're trying to dry your winter mittens, if you're trying to, you know, put your kids are notorious for throwing things beside it and adults are as too. We've seen that. It seems like adults cause more problems sometimes than kids. Yeah, cases, kids. So <laughs> but, Josh, thank you. Yeah. Uh, and, and Northern Lights, phone number for Northern Lights? So Northern Lights, it's 778-6566. Uh, and then also you can email at northernlightsmain at gmail.com. Um, it's a good way to reach us as well. So. And, and they will certainly answer any questions. They also have the, the stoves that we've looked at here today, but there are other vendors out there that you may want to contact that are closer to you. But these guys certainly do good work. I know it. I can personally attest to that. And Josh, thank you for letting us use your facility to demonstrate yeah. these things and to tape the show. Yeah, not a problem. It's always a pleasure. Yes. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. You're welcome. So we hope that what we've shown you here is the importance of being prepared for the winter when Tim spoke a little bit about some of the things you should do, a little bit about the fire hazards that are created by your different kinds of uh, combustion stoves that are out there, from a propane stove to a wood stove to a pellet stove to a uh, fireplace, and then finally things that you should consider doing as far as maintenance is concerned, that you can do yourself on wood stoves and pellet stoves and ask a professional to help you with your propane stove. So we hope this is helpful for you as you prepare for this winter. We know it's gonna be a tough time through, um, and we hope this prepares you. Again, I wanna thank our sponsors, which were the, the uh, Masons, both the Grand Lodge of Maine and the local Wil uh, Wilton Masons group. i uh, also like to thank Northern Lights for letting us use their facility, and for my good friends from Mount Blue TV for taping this, and hoping that if you have any questions, feel free to uh, give a call um, to any one of the vendors or the people that we talked to today or to someone locally around you that may sell wood stoves, your fire department, or your emergency management group. We'll see you next time. Be safe this winter. Thank you.